Hey there guys, Luke here with the Outdoor Gear Review. Hope you're all doing well. Today for this episode, this is the gear loadout for our most recent day hike to Alligator's Back. So basically what we're going to be doing here is going over the clothing, we're going to go over the gear, and there you go. Grab a cup of coffee, let's go ahead and get started. The first thing that we'll do is start with clothing and then work our way to the backpack. And we'll go ahead here and start with the Fjall Raven Sieb vest. And guys, forgive me if I say that wrong, I do my best. But I tell you what, I like this vest. This is pretty darn nice. And I've had this for a long time actually, and just haven't gotten around to actually wearing it. A very good choice for that trip. It did a good job of blocking the wind and insulating my core just a little bit. This is not definitely not an insulating layer by any means but it does retain just a little bit of heat. In my pocket here, I just had my cell phone, and that was about it. The shirt that I had on underneath that, now I have told you guys about these many times, and these are just super cheap, very inexpensive t-shirts from Old Navy. This is part of their active line of clothing. You can get these for about three, four bucks, and they do a pretty good job of wicking away moisture. They're not bad. When it comes to t-shirts, I usually get them dirty pretty fast, and as soon as they get pretty rank and torn up, I just throw them away. You know, so instead of spending, you know, 20, 30, 40 bucks on a t-shirt, I'll spend three dollars, wear them out, chuck them. That's just how I like to do it myself. As far as the long sleeve shirt that I had on underneath it, it is a Patagonia shirt, and I'll have to go ahead and just flash the name of it on the screen here. It's in the dirty clothes, in the washer actually, otherwise I'd show it to you. But I'll definitely post a picture on the screen here and post the name of it. Now when it comes to the pants, these are the Fjall Raven Barrett trousers. I'll go ahead and move the camera so you guys can see them now. Now you guys have seen these many, many times. These are absolutely my favorite trekking pants for 95% of the year. In the hottest part of the summer, in the full sun, this black color really soaks up the heat, so I like to go with something lighter. But otherwise, I love these pants all year round. Now, as far as underwear goes, I usually I wouldn't mention this, but somebody actually brought this up and wanted to know what do I do to prevent chafing? Most of the time I can get away with just Ecficio Give and Go Boxers. They're absolutely awesome and they do a really good job of just pulling that moisture away from you and also to prevent that rubbing which actually causes the chafing there. And these are 94% nylon, 6% spandex. And I tell you what guys, if you have issues with chafing, and you typically will if you're doing a long distance hike, underwear is absolutely key. You can't go out there wearing something with cotton. It will only soak up the moisture, rub your raw, that's a promise. As far as the socks go, I was wearing a pair of these Keen Arch Support Daily Light Socks. They're merino wool, and there's a little bit of some other material in there as well. But I absolutely love these socks. As you might be able to see right here, there's an L, and then on the other one, there's an R. And that's because Keen makes their socks to actually fit each of your feet. So the right one goes on the right foot, the left one goes on the left foot, and I have to say that I like that. To me, they have a better fit, they don't slide down. Fantastic. Moving to the shoes, these are some of my favorite shoes of all time, and they are the Vasque Jusk shoes. These are amazing. I absolutely love them. They're super comfortable. You guys saw my previous pair that I absolutely blew up, destroyed them. The entire bottom of that shoe was just worn off after so many miles of use. Now, I do have to admit that in, I think, 99% of my videos where I've mentioned these shoes, I have mispronounced the name. I usually refer to them as Vasky. That's not right. That's not correct. It's actually Vasque. Now, I know for certain that I'm not the only one who mispronounces that. That's typically how I hear it anyway, but it's Vasque, not Vasky. You also saw it in the video, the knife that I carry, and that is the Kershaw Onion Blade. That thing rocks. Fantastic knife. I, I wish it didn't have that serrated <laughs> bit to it right here, but other than that, still a fantastic knife. Now we're actually moving to the gear in the pack, and we're going to start here right on top. What we have here is a vault mesh bag, which I keep my batteries and stuff in, extra memory cards, stuff like that. 
I also kept some easy to grab snacks in here. One thing that I really like about this pack is where the hydration bladder goes. There's a separate pocket where the hydration bladder actually fits down into instead of actually being on the inside portion of the pack. I like that. The hydration bladder that I used is from the FILBE. It is a Camelback Military Spec Antidote Bladder. This pack actually comes with one with a much improved sleeve, insulating sleeve that goes over the tube. I have so many hydration bladders right now, there's no point in using them all. So I've been just kind of running this one for a while. Definitely top notch, you guys know that. This is our GPS unit. And this is the Garmin GPS Map 62 STC. This is one of the best GPS units out there. It is also one of the most expensive. But if you want to have the best technology, this is definitely one to look at. Now with this pack, there are two side pockets. One right here, one right here, and I had nothing in those. With that being said, it is now time for us to go to the inside of this bag and take a look. I love that design. That is just wicked cool. The two zips, and then you have that one zip that goes right down the middle, and then you could just open it up. I think that is very, very neat. So on the inside of the pack, I had a fleece pullover just in case I needed it. And it almost got to that point. There's a couple times when I was eating lunch where I started to get pretty cold with that breeze. And that wind was rocking about 20 miles an hour. Now this pullover is a Mammut pullover. It is a mid-weight fleece. Honestly guys, I have no idea what model this is. There is no indications on it. And I've tried to look up where I bought this from and I cannot remember. I can't seem to find it. So if you're interested in a good fleece, Mammut does pretty good. On the inside of this pack, you have two mesh pockets on both sides that zip up. I like that a lot. In one of them, I had a Vargo bottle with alcohol for my stove. And also in that pocket, we had our fire kit. Striker, which uh, I should say this is a fire steel striker. I personally don't like the striker being attached to the ferro rod. It's too restrictive. I, I just don't like it. I have a pretty good sized piece of tin foil here. I could uh, basically use this for anything. I always keep some with me. I have a lighter and a little Ziploc bag. I have a bar of trioxane. And I also have an empty Ziploc bag. You just never know when you're going to need one, so it's just easy to keep them in there. And you won't notice the weight. Also, folks, these bags are the Vault Mesh bags. They absolutely rule, they're color-coded, they're different sizes, and for me, they do a fantastic job of keeping my gear organized. I, I like having everything in central groups where I can open up my pack and be like, I need my fire kit, I'm gonna grab the yellow one. I, I need my food, I'm grabbing the black one. Stuff like that. Speaking of food and the mesh bag, here it is. What we had on that trip was a mountain house meal. Fantastic, super delicious. That was a beef stroganoff too. That's pretty good. Inside of that bag, have some additional snacks, stuff like that. Moving on to the fire kit. And this is just the Esbit five piece trekking cook set. And that includes an alcohol stove. That includes a solid fuel burning plate. It's a great kit. The spoon is a Light My Fire Titanium Spork. They say this edge right here is a knife, but uh, if you're chopping anything more than a noodle, it's not really gonna do a whole lot of good. Here is the cook set itself. You have a nice good lid, good handles on it. On the inside, I just had a washcloth for cleaning up. Here's the alcohol stove, and basically that is just a Trangia ripoff, but it works really, really well. Here's the stand, and basically just sits on it, like that. That is a fantastic kit, it really does work well, very functional. Now as you guys saw in that video, and I'm sure you heard, it was super duper windy. 
So, you know, this did a fair job of blocking out the wind, but I definitely could have done a little bit more work and made a makeshift windscreen. Something I could have done, I didn't do. That's just how it goes. I have to say that Espit did good with this mesh bag, the storage bag. It's lightweight, but it's also big enough to be able to get your cook set in and out of. I have some cook sets where it is so tight around the pot that it's a struggle, and that is a super pain in the butt. Definitely a pet peeve of mine. Right here is a polar fleece uh, beanie. Didn't actually wear it. Super warm, super comfortable. This is actually a military surplus item that I got. And you guys have seen these gloves before, and these are just Joe Boxer gloves. And they are 80% acrylic, 13% polyester. There's a little bit of spandex in there. These are not bad. These will not keep you super warm, but they do a good job of just kind of breaking the wind a little bit, insulating you just a little bit. They're super cheap. They cost about a buck. And once you tear them up, you get holes in them like this. You can keep them, you can throw them away, whatever you want to do. Going into the other side mesh pocket. This is what I call my miscellaneous bag. And inside of this, I keep miscellaneous items that I need for my day hike, I need for my overnight trips, and also just in case. So I'll go ahead and open this up for you. Here's a Ziploc bag that basically is my light bag. I have my Petzl headlamp. This is a fantastic little headlamp right here. This is definitely one of the best headlamps out there for the money. In this bag, I have all sorts of different batteries. I also have two photon lights. Here's a red photon light. And here is a white light. The battery is actually kind of dying on this one, but I've, I keep it around. It still produces just enough light and also it's super lightweight, you don't notice that it's there. The leftover items are batteries, and we have three AAA for the headlamp, two additional batteries for the GPS just in case. Here's another Ziploc bag, and that just contains a toothbrush and toothpaste. Toilet paper, don't leave home without it. The last item in this bag is my first aid kit. This is an Adventure Medical Kit Ultralight .3 first aid kit. I have customized this. There are items inside of this that I personally like to use that I like to take with me. Anytime that you have a first aid kit, I highly recommend that you customize it. You need to go through it. You need to know what each of the items are. You need to know how to use them. It's absolutely useless if you go out hiking, you open up your first aid kit, you have no idea what this stuff is or how to use it. So you need to customize your own. You can do like I did. Buy a cheap one of these. Look on Sierra Trading Post. Use a coupon code. Get these for almost nothing. Keep one in your pack. But before you stick it in there, customize it. Go through, take out what you're not going to use, put in what you need. Be smart, folks. Also, guys, I almost forgot. Inside of my vehicle, I did have the RAV Power Power Brick. And I'll post the model number there on the screen for you. Basically, I was just using this to charge my phone. This thing's still in testing. So my friends, that's it. That's the gear loadout for our day hike. And that was at the alligators back there in Dalton Park. Such a beautiful place. Now coming up in a couple days, you will see our after the hike video where we will discuss the gear in more detail and we'll also discuss the hike. So guys, make sure to like, comment, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. I will definitely see you all around. Be good, be safe, get outdoors.